What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Coming to you fresh in the new apparel. Man, I love this color scheme. If you want to cop some merchandise, go ahead in the description. Uh, I got my email there, paint.society at yahoo.com. Shoot me an email and I'll give you the details to get one for yourself. Now today we're going to be solving a big problem and a big problem that I see and that I always get messages about is Brian I got stripes in the middle of my silver hood and when I'm blending it's not coming out good. All I'm doing is putting more paint, it's looking worse, I feel you guys pain. So what we're going to do in this video today is we're going to break it down. I'm going to be going very slow with my teaching. I'm going to explain to you what you need to do at what steps to get the middle of a hood and across the whole entire panel nice and even. So let's get started. So it's all masked up, it's looking good. In an ideal world, we pull off the bumper and the lights, but this is a job and that's all we're gonna say about that. So let's go ahead and let's talk about what we have. Now so many people ask me, Brian, what's the difference between a primer and a sealer? Well, if you take a look at the hood over here, this is primer, okay? Now primer has been covering all the Bondo, all the bare metal, and primer you can put down and sand smooth and it kind of is a little bit thicker. Now sealer would only come after primer. So your sealer coat, which I'll show you in just a moment, is gonna go over the whole entire hood, give us a nice even playing field, a nice brand new surface for our silver metallic. Do I recommend a sealer? 100%. Do you need a sealer? If you have perfect body work and perfect, and you can confirm that you do not need to cover any little fine sanding scratches, then you wouldn't need it. But I just can't see doing a job on a silver metallic that's got a lot, a lot of body work without using it. So that's that. Let's go ahead and mask off this fender and we'll start spraying some sealer. So we got our fenders all masked. Guys, you're struggling with fish eyes? Look at what I'm doing. This is water-based cleaner, then solvent. Take a look at the panel. See how bubbly and soapy it is? The whole entire thing has been saturated. Do this. I don't want you just doing a little wipe. And then you're gonna take your cloth and you're gonna wipe it in one direction. You're not gonna go all over the place. You're gonna take the contaminants, run them off the panel. Use as many rags as you need, okay? No one's gonna complain about you using three or four rags, but they're gonna complain about all the fish eyes you got because you didn't take enough time to clean the panel first. All right, now with our solvent. Guys, make it wet, all right? The whole thing. Lift up those contaminants to the surface. This you wanna work in small areas. Take it, wipe it off, wipe it off one direction if you don't get all of this off and you let this evaporate on the panel that can create fish eyes as well drying it with a dry towel these are prep towels by smart do not go and get your uh, shop towels from walmart that's going to leave lint use the right product get good results so for sealer i need that sealer to lay extremely smooth and this is the time when it helps to really have a good gun. So whenever you ask me, Brian, oh, what's my budget? Remember, how far is your budget gonna get when you wanna turn out a nice paint job? Remember that. 
Okay? This gun is gonna lay down that sealer smooth. And it's gonna lay down that base effortlessly. That's really gonna help you. And if you're struggling with a color, good paint and a good gun will go a long way. Yes, a good painter can make most guns good. But some of you guys aren't good painters yet. So you need all the help you can get. Just keeping it real. Now, I'm gonna use the light, the Lumina light. I use it for coverage. That's the way I like it. I won't use it for clear, but if I wanna make sure my sealer's covered, that's what I love it for. We're gonna spray our sealer on. We're gonna do about a 75% overlap. That means that every time we pass over, 25% is a new area that is covered with sealer. We wanna keep it wet. Whatever goes on top of the sealer is going to show. And that silver metallic, if, it's, if the sealer's rough, it will show you that. Watch my technique. Watch how I spray. Watch the distance. I'm going to be spraying around 15 PSI on a DV-1. It's an exceptionally low pressure gun that has extremely high transfer efficiency rate. So let's get sh uh, shooting now. All right, so I'm gonna put my sealer in this area because I got a little bit of body work there. And then I'm gonna burn that edge. I'm gonna melt away that rough edge with SRA reducer, all right? I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, so we just sprayed. Now right away, I'm gonna kill that uh, edge that can land dry right here with some reducer sprayer right out of the aerosol. Good to go. This edge right here is perfectly smooth. And if it wasn't, you could take some 3000 grit and just kind of run over that edge or maybe even 2000. And what that would do is smooth out the edge. Now, remember that paper from before? Well, we're actually gonna put it back on and we're gonna once again protect this area. You see, we don't want something called sand piling. An excessive amount of coats, especially in a metallic. What I want to do is I want to get my 1J2 paint coat of silver covered on the hood, and then I'll take off my fender masking, and then I'll do my one or two coats to blend into the fenders. So we got the fender all masked up, and remember, we have our other one still masked. Now, this is a very important part. Remember I tell you guys all the time, slower is faster. I got myself slow reducer, okay? What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow the paint to dry evenly. If you put a medium or a fast in there or a normal, as soon as the paint hits the panel, it's gonna be dry, it's gonna be gritty, and that's what's giving you streaks, okay? If you're a little bit too um, big on your passes, all right, and not consistently overlap, overlapping with 75 to 80 percent, you allow dry spaces. Dry spaces are streaks. Once again, it's good paint, a good gun, and the right reducer is going to go a long way. Believe it or not, there's not a whole lot to technique other than what you put in the paint and the pressures and all that, which I'm going to show you here in a moment. Oh. On this DV1, I'm still gonna run 15 PSI. I've got my fan wide open. I've got my fluid wide open. I'm gonna do about a 75% to 80% pass. That means approximately, remember, 25% of that pass is gonna be new paint. So I'm moving slow. I'm keeping a distance of around 45 inches and I'm watching the paint go on the panel. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. All right, so if you take a look at the hood, one coat actually covered really well. Now, on your first coat, if it's got a little streaking, please leave it alone. Don't get freaked out. 
let it flash. Let it dry for about 10 minutes. If you take a look at the hood, it looks pretty even so far, okay? So at this point, I know I've got good coverage with that one coat. I don't need to add another one. So right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to my fenders and I'm going to take off my um, covered, covered fenders and now I'm ready to start my blend, okay? Okay, so we have our paper peeled off the panel. Now let's talk a little bit about blending additive or clear base coat. It's the same thing. Check your manufacturer and the paint that you spray. Usually every single system has one, okay? So what I'm gonna do with this, we're gonna use it in two different ways. So I'm going to apply it first over the fender and then I'm gonna let it completely dry. And then I'm gonna utilize it as a wet bed. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So first we're gonna spray it over the whole fender and allow it to dry. A uh, blending additive has now flashed. It's done what it's needed to do. It's kind of giving me the same type of look as the base and the uh, existing clear coat. So we know we're in good hands. Now we're gonna use it in a different way. I'm gonna spray my blending additive only in the area of my blend. And then right away, I'm gonna go into my base coat. I'm not gonna wait. And what this is gonna do, it's going to help with the dry edge of my base coat when it lands in this wet bed, okay? And it's gonna be completely smooth instead of dry. For it to land dry, what would happen would, it would be gritty and it would show kind of a halo. Now on base coat, you cannot use that spray, the aerosol spray like before. That's only on like your undercoats or your clear coat, all right? So I'm gonna do the blending additive wet bed in the blend area both sides and then we're going to hit up the whole entire hood at once and the fender where we need to blend it and it's going to be nice and smooth. I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, it's wet. We got to roll before it dries. And that's exactly it. You leave it right there, you let it flash. We're gonna assess it in a moment and see if we still need a little bit more coverage. Okay, so we got that coat on, the first coat on our fenders, and it looks great. But I need a little bit more coverage on those fenders. I'm not gonna just hit up the fenders. I wanna do everything as a whole. So I'll put one more coat on it. All right, so I got that base we've been using. And I got the clear additive, the blending additive. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top off here and I've got four ounces in here. And what I'm gonna do is one to one, 50-50, 100 to 100, same thing. I'm gonna put the same parts in here. So I'm gonna fill this up to just about eight because it's at four. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna take away the strength of the color. It's gonna make the color more transparent. And that's exactly what I want. That's gonna help out with any last end streaking you might have. And it's gonna help with your blend at the fenders. Now you don't need to use a wet bed when you're using this because it's already got the blending additive in it. Now when we spray this, what we can do is we can use our drop coat, okay? Drop coat, effect coat, orientation coat. 
Those are the same types of um, names that it has. Now what we can do is we can man, move down our pressure a few pounds, depending on the gun, and we're gonna increase our distance to maybe about uh, eight inches, a little bit more, but we're still keeping those passes around 75 to 80%, okay? We're gonna put it on nice and easy, and then we're gonna check it out, and I think it's gonna be ready for clear. your coverage make sure you don't have any streaks using the 3m sun gun lights off this emulates the sun's rays and it's going to show you what it's going to look like once it's outside and cleared looks like we're good to go man spraying silver is fun but there's nothing like laying down on a nice coat of glossy clear coat wait to check that out in just a moment but hey you know, this video really included a lot of steps that you can use. Watch the video three, four times. If you have a question, shoot me a DM on Instagram. I would love to help you out. Students in a vocational school, at technical school. Man, this stuff is power for you guys, man. I wish I had someone like me at that young age to show me on video. I had a lot of great help on the internet, but YouTube wasn't around. So use the tools for myself and everyone else in the comments. This was an awesome, awesome video, and I really hope you learned something from the video. This is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. Let's check it out.